guys and welcome to today's video. I'm gonna start by addressing the fact that I have been not on YouTube for the last almost two weeks and I do apologize for that. I had mentioned in some previous videos where my posting was getting really spotty that things were just a little crazy lately. Things are coming down a little bit. I believe this next week coming up my videos will all be on track. If not this week coming up then the week following and for many weeks afterwards we should be all good from here on out. I thought I would do this little bit of a video as a very simple get ready with me. This is honestly my just go-to makeup if I just want to even out my skin tone, look presentable for work and get out the door. That will mean that I'll be focusing a little less on the makeup. I probably won't even mention it, I might just list what the makeup is that I am using. Instead, I'm gonna do a little bit of a chit chat, talk about why my life has been so busy, but more than that, just tell you a little bit more about me. So I know that this video is not going to be everybody's cup of tea. I think this is more for the about 50 or so people who watch all of my videos and are maybe just a little more curious about who this person is, other than just putting on makeup and doing some money management videos. Um, so that is the plan for today. Uh, I will also say that by the time this is posted, I am pretty sure I will have responded to the winner on the palette giveaway for ColourPop. I know I'm like a day behind on that. Again, forgive me, life is just getting in the way all over the place. Uh, but for now, let's get into putting on makeup and chatting. So I always consider to myself that there's like four priorities in my life that take up time. Uh, and those are my relationships, my significant other, my friends and family. Um, then there is my actual, you know, work day job. <laughs> um, also my uh, health, like trying to do some exercise here and there, which has super flagged lately as well. Uh, and then also my hobbies and interests and doing videos for YouTube. So if things ever get really spotty here on posting things on YouTube, chances are a couple of those other things have started taking up more of my life. Um, because friends and family, significant other, um, work are going to take priority over my hobby, unfortunately. So I don't talk too much about certain parts of my life because I like to have a little bit of uh, anonymity, but also if it's, you know, other people I'm talking about, I don't really want to share too much of their lives. I will say that in the work that I do, there are certain times of year that are busier than others. And also the department that I'm in, um, when my uh, when my boss is gone, I am sort of in charge of the department. So um, when that person is gone for a significant amount of time, there's more responsibility on me, not a huge amount. It's almost more like it just takes up more of my brain power than you know necessarily having a lot more tasks or anything to do. Um, but just also there's been some big meetings and things happening where um, it's come home from work with me a little bit more than usual. And part of that means just spending some more time doing work and part of that means uh, just thinking about it. And I find when I'm doing these videos, I don't ever wanna sit down and do a video when I'm you know, not in a happy place, when I'm not fully focused on it, when I don't want to be doing it. I always wanna sit here and chat with you and be excited to be sitting here chatting with you through a camera. Um, and just because I've had a little bit more stress and stuff lately, I haven't been in the headspace for that and I don't ever wanna sit here and just pretend to be happy for the sake of being on camera. Um, the other thing is that uh, a person who's very important to me in my life is going to be away for a significant amount of time. So I've been spending some time uh, spending more time with that person. Uh, also, I had my mom visiting last weekend and oftentimes when my life gets a little bit busy, I try to pre-film videos on the weekend so I just need to edit them during the week and then I didn't get a chance to do that. So um, just a lot of stuff all around. But that is hopefully not excuses, just an explanation. But yeah, I thought I would take this time to tell you a little bit more about who I am. So I've mentioned before my videos being from uh, Toronto. Uh, which is, in case you didn't know, a large Canadian city. I now live in Ottawa, but I did grow up in Toronto, I actually grew up in the suburbs of Toronto. For those of you who know Toronto well, I grew up in Mississauga. Uh, but my parents still live in Toronto and they've now moved into like Toronto proper, like in the actual city, on the subway line, that kind of thing. So that is where I grew up. Um, ended up going to, <laughs> when I grew up, I totally thought I was going to be a 
veterinarian. Um, I was very strong in maths and sciences. I was strong in other subjects too. I was a very good student, straight A student, but I totally thought I was going to be a veterinarian. So when I went away to school, I went to a school that was a veterinary school uh, for university um, because you go and do a year of like biology first and then apply to get into the veterinary medicine program. Now, even though I was a, I think I still maintained a straight A average in the first year of that program, um, I just didn't have the marks to apply that first year. The other thing is a lot of suburban city girls like me, you know, want to be veterinarians and you know, we've had cats and dogs and I actually did a, uh, co-op placement when I was in high school working at a veterinary office. So I spent, you know, I guess it was four months working full time at a veterinary office. So I've been, you know, observing and helping out in, you know, cat and dog spayings and neuterings and uh, all those kinds of things. So I knew that quite well. But in veterinary school, they really want you to have large animal experience. So having worked with, you know, cows, pigs, horses, farm animals, that kind of thing, because apparently that's where it's harder to find people to be vets. I um, did horseback riding when I was a younger kid, uh, but that doesn't really give you that much experience. So after I didn't get, I didn't even actually apply for veterinary school after the first year because I knew my marks and experience weren't there. I tried to do a little bit more volunteering after that. I volunteered at a uh, equine research center, discovered that I'm horrendously allergic to like hay and barns and things like that. I have uh, asthma that flares up now and then being around large animals wasn't really great for it. Um, so I sort of diverted from veterinary medicine and ended up doing a uh, four year degree in biomedical science. Uh, graduating from that, I had no idea what I wanted to do and decided to pursue my education a little bit further and went in a completely different direction uh, and ended up doing a two years master's of business program. So I actually have a MBA as well as a bachelor of science. I use the MBA now somewhat because I'm in a sort of businessy profession, uh, but it helps a little bit on here when I'm talking about marketing, things like that, because my uh, specializations in my MBA were marketing and not-for-profit management. The school that I was in, you specialize after your first year. First year you do finance, accounting, marketing, uh, HR, sort of a wide range of everything and then decide to specialize. I went in there thinking I was going to be an accountant or you know, in finance or investing and uh, it just didn't call to me. And I really liked the idea of going into nonprofit, having more of a mission in the job that you were in rather than just creating shareholder value. Uh, and that's how I ended up being in the world of nonprofit, which is where I have been working for the last 15 years. So talking about the makeup briefly, did some primer, did some very light foundation, set it all with powder, and now I'm putting on my blush. And I've been finding that I've been enjoying doing my blush very high up on my cheeks lately. Uh, I find it gives me a more youthful look, um, which I've really been enjoying. So let's switch gears a little bit away from work and education. Uh, and let me tell you a little bit more about my personal life. Uh, I think I have alluded before um, to the fact that I was married. I am now divorced. I met my ex-husband. Uh, he and I were working together in the same uh, summer jobs over a couple of years when I was still living in the Toronto area. Uh, we ended up being together for 10 years in total, married for five of those years. And it was when he and I were married that we moved to the outskirts of Ottawa, bought a house, um, lived together for you know, five years, as I said, and that's how I ended up coming here to the Ottawa area. We had decided we wanted to buy a home. The Toronto area is very restrictive and expensive in terms of buying a house, especially as a young couple starting out. We had family here already. I've mentioned my sister, she's here in the Ottawa area. And so we came out to Ottawa and, um, you know, that marriage did not work out. Um, not in any kind of like huge horrendous blow up kind of way, just a uh, realization that we wanted different things. Uh, of course there were, you know, everybody has their moments of unhappiness and not unhappiness, that's not fair. Things that you don't always see eye to eye on and then sometimes as the relationship progresses you move through those things, sometimes they become bigger. Um, this was just something that we decided was not something you can reconcile. There's a few major, I'll tell you a little bit more, there's a few major things that you just can't compromise on in a relationship. One of those things is having children. 
I um, have always sort of known, but I didn't think knew as strongly then as I do now or knew later on in my marriage that I am not somebody who is interested in having kids. I um, don't dislike children. To me, it's almost like, this is gonna be a horrible analogy, like, why don't you have a parrot? I don't dislike parrots. <laughs> you know, I have no problem being around them. I think, you know, they're good and everything, but it's just not something that I ever saw in my life. You know, I was never somebody who grew up babysitting other people's kids. Um, I never babysat ever. Uh, I just am not somebody who is naturally inclined to be around kids and I don't, I'm not drawn to that. My, I told you about the whole veterinary medicine thing. My family has always been like wonderful and accepting and just never even really gave it any second thought about me not having kids. Um, my sister used to joke that she would, you know, have kids and then they would come to visit Aunt Melissa at her farm with all of her animals. <laughs> I'm very much an animal lover. I, uh, you know, the whole veterinary medicine thing. I've had pets all the time. Um, but uh, yeah, that just wasn't in the cards for me and I knew that and didn't want to uh, compromise that about myself and not be happy, but also um, for him, that was something that was something that he wanted and it just unfortunately wasn't going to be with me. Uh, so we went our separate ways. If anybody out there is reading this, or reading this, that's not the right word. If anybody there is watching this, uh, and has a, is maybe younger and has similar feelings about kids, it's hard because there's sort of this expectation that you do certain things in life. You get a good education, you maybe go to college or university, you meet somebody, you get married, you have kids, you have this job, you raise your kids, you uh, retire. That's how like life goes. Um, and when you are somebody who says, oh, that one part of this isn't something that I'm interested in doing, um, People just assume, no, no, you'll you'll get there. You'll do that at some point. Uh, and it wasn't until I was in my early to mid thirties and you know just divorced that people stopped telling me that I would change my mind. You know, it'll happen, all that sort of thing. Uh, but if you are somebody who knows yourself and you know that is what you want in your life or don't want, as the case may be. Um, you know yourself, you know, it's it's something about you and that's okay. There are some people who may uh, never want to get married. There are some people who, you know, they don't ever want necessarily a steady job. They want to do like creative kinds of things their whole lives. You make choices about yourself. And I know this is getting much heavier than I meant for it to be, um, but it is something about me. Now that we've gotten all heavy there, let's pull back a little bit to a uh, less intense topic. Uh, so after I got divorced, I still lived in my home for a couple of years after that. I'll also mention, I'll put up a picture here. Um, when my ex and I were together just after we got married, we a adopted a dog, a Basset Hound, who has been the only dog I've had in my whole life, but she was amazing and wonderful and the sweetest dog you could ever meet. And she stayed with me after my ex and I got divorced. Um, and I lived in that home for a couple more years and, uh, you know, my dog Maggie lived there very happily with me and was always not the wellest dog in the world. She had a lot of allergies. Uh, she was allergic to a lot of foods. She had allergies around just the environment. Um, she ended up living for eight very, very happy years. Um, and I took as best care of her as I think anybody could, uh, towards the end of her life we were probably at the vet office about once a month or so and uh, at the end the only kind of food she could eat was kibble made from kangaroo protein um, but she was the most wonderful little pup and loved her so much i don't have any pets now um after maggie passed away it was actually around the time i was already moving um, maggie passed away which probably ended up I don't want to say for the best, that's not right, but she had a home with a yard and everything like that. And I was planning on coming into Ottawa downtown because, you know, maintaining a three bedroom home for one person living there with my dog that was a 45 minute drive from my job, it just, it was taking its toll on me. Uh, being a homeowner and all of that. So I decided to sell my house, move, came to where I am now, which is right downtown in Ottawa. I am now a uh, 10 to 15 minute walk away from where I work, which is awesome. Um, I don't own a home anymore. I rent this place, which I actually really enjoy. It just takes, 
it just means that I have more flexibility in my life. And wow, I've really gotten away from putting any makeup on, haven't I? Let me find the next thing to put on. Actually, it's usually at this point that I will set my base makeup. So let's do that. So I do love where I live now. It almost feels a bit more like having a, a launching pad, just a little like home base in the city. You know, I can clean this place top to bottom in pretty much an hour. It's a little, uh, very small one bedroom. Uh, it's actually a condo, but as I said, I'm renting it. Um, you know, I did a huge purge of so much stuff that I had when I was living in a house in coming here. And it just means that I can keep everything really, you know, easy to clean, just everything goes away into its place, and then I can get on with doing fun, interesting things in the city. You've only seen little snippets of my place, and I keep promising, and I swear I will at one point do a home tour, but of what you've seen, you've seen a lot of white, not a lot of clutter. That's how I like to keep the place. In the last year or so of being married before my ex and I split up, I think at any point, I mean, we always had a good relationship through our entire marriage, but you're always gonna have some chaotic points, especially when a relationship is sort of, you know, breaking down a little bit and moving on. And uh, I, when things were extra chaotic, I used to sort of dream when I was going to bed at night that I would be in, you know, this nice calm, place and in my mind it was always uh, a beautiful bed made up with like white linens and white pillows and everything around it was just really bright and calm and that's what I would sort of think about in my head as my happy place uh, when I was going to sleep and that's kind of what I've tried to make for myself here is that very white calm quiet you know serene happy place for myself. So if I look at my life from 10 years ago from when I was married to today, it's very different, but I'm very happy with where I am now. I have a wonderful boyfriend now uh, that we, we don't live together, we live near each other, uh, but don't live together, but just are very uh, wonderful and supportive of each other. And I think it happens as you get further along in your life. Um, you know, you've maybe been through a few relationships that you understand more about yourself deeper as a person, you understand who you're looking for in a partner. Um, and it sounds very cliche, but the idea about being good with yourself uh, and then bringing somebody in who complements that rather than trying to find somebody who takes care of some part of your life for you. Um, my partner and I are very close to each other, but I also don't depend on that person for anything. I am a whole person unto myself and he is part of my life because my life is better because he is part of it um, rather than trying to as I said you know get something from that person if that sounds right uh, so I think I'm just in a very good you know simple place in my life <laughs> there's a lot of stress and things that go on in my life but in terms of having an environment that is good for me um, having relationships that are good for me I'm really happy with where I am in that uh, and I would encourage maybe all of you to do that too think about creating places that are calm thinking about understanding yourself um, and who you want in a partnership if you are not together with somebody already and want to be uh, it's there are still parts of my life that I am trying to figure out a way to get to where I want it to be. Um, if some of you have started watching my videos lately and have not gone like way back in the Melissa Joyce playlist, um, some of my earliest videos were money management videos. I'm still incredibly passionate about that. It was when I got divorced and found that suddenly I was living in a home by myself. I had debt. I had all these bills that I wasn't just paying 50% of now. I was paying all of um, that. I really got all my money under control and still have kept that up to this day. Feel very comfortable with that. Want others to feel that level of calmness that I feel. I feel I've gotten to a place where my environment is really good for me, my relationships. Um, I'm still working on the health thing a little bit. Uh, you can't really tell so much in these videos and it's part of what makes me comfortable being on camera is that I, I look a little smaller on camera <laughs> than I actually am in real life. Uh, I would definitely like to get in better shape physically, you know, lose some weight, but also be at a place where I could do a lot of, you know, 
uh, sports and physical activities without feeling like I'm not in the best shape for it. Uh, so I think that's what I'm going to try to focus on next in my life is doing a little bit more of that. I know this has been super rambly all over the place, um, but this is the makeup look that I do if I'm just going to work. No eyeshadow, no brow products, just really base products that make me look evened out and fresh. A little bit of mascara, a little bit of lipstick that is very natural. That is what I do. Uh, I may do more of these sort of chatty, get ready with me, talk a little bit more about myself in the future. If you are interested in that kind of thing, give this video a thumbs up so I know you like it or leave me a comment or ask me questions in the comments that I could discuss in a future video. I would be happy to do so. Uh, that is all from me for now. I will say if you're not subscribed to me, you can subscribe. And I'm guessing that if you're watching this, you probably are subscribed to me because this is a very specific specialized video for people who are interested in my life. Uh, so for you, I would say maybe hit the bell notification if you haven't so far. I'm going to try to get back to posting more regularly, but just in case, hitting that bell lets you know when I post. Uh, that is all for me for now. Thank you for sticking in through this. This was maybe a little bit more for me than for you uh, but I'm oftentimes interested in a little bit more about the people that I see when I'm watching YouTube because I am a very very uh voracious YouTube watcher as well this is definitely how I get all of my entertainment so that is all from me I will see you in my next video bye